Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and today we are welcoming back one of my favorite guests, a friend we have met a long time ago back in 2015 uh, for Amazon FBA stuff. And we met in a Facebook group, I believe, uh, called Mommy Income. <laughs> anyway, its name is Scott Zilke, aka The Bearded Picker, and we instantly shared a love of thrifting and flipping stuff on eBay and Amazon and doing arbitrage. And at that time he had quit his job and he was driving all over the country doing Amazon FBA and eBay flipping. And we went reselling one or we went thrifting once and they had a great time at a, at a conference with a bunch of people. And we just had been friends. He is such an amazing person and a great, um, just a great entrepreneur in general. And so I'm so happy to have Scott back on the show. So welcome, Scott. It's so good to have you here. Scott, hey, I'm so glad you're back on the show. It's good to see you. It's very good to talk to you. It's been a while. It has been a while, too long, in fact. And so, I mean, I know you haven't been putting out too many videos, so I had to hit you up and be like, you know what, you at least got to come on my video because we got to have a chat. Um, I've always enjoyed your channel, The Bearded Picker. And so tell me what you've been doing in the last uh, several months that have, you know, taken you away from your channel. Uh, well, I took my own advice, you know, I did the I did a morning show for what four or five years straight every Wednesday or and sometimes a couple times a week, and where I would tell people you know my opinion on what's going on and you know how they can really focus on you know newer people starting businesses and and what they can do to be successful. Turns out I never listened to my own self, uh, and that's <laughs> you get so busy. And so I decided to just make a U turn and change what I sold and, and change change the philosophy of my business, not necessarily the model, because it's still, it's still arbitrage. It's just, um, I was trying to come up with a different term, yard sale arbitrage, something, um, because thrifting and yard sale is what I truly, that's my passion. I've done that since I can't remember a time in my life. I didn't go to a yard sale. And I live in an area in Huntsville, Alabama, that has got very good yard, very tech area, very good yard. And I'm the electronics guy and that's the stuff I pick up and I'm like, wait a minute, this stuff you use has got tremendous value on Amazon. <laughs> I mean, a good example this morning, I will be shipping out a Dymo 450 label maker. And you think, Beard, what can you do with one Dymo? I got $237 for a four or five year old label printer that I picked up at a yard sale for five dollars you know what our kind does not un like people don't understand our kind like i'm the same as you i cannot when you said that i was like i'm trying to think of a memory that far back that i can remember about five years old or younger or about that age and we just didn't have a lot of money so i love yard sales because everything was cheap i mean if i had a dollar i could buy stuff and so to me that was like the beginning of my love of thrifting and i know you we instantly bonded over that stuff and we you i've learned a lot from you as far as the electronics i remember the one time we, we went to like with savers or, or something like that and then you were picking up those um caller id boxes the rest of us are like that's a paperweight and you're like no that's 50 bucks and we're like really and you're showing us the little tricks i'm like that's the thing so you're doing that only now it's between you're, you're doing it on amazon so talk a little bit more about your experience on amazon of uh, discovering that used electronics actually have great value there so early on, uh, I started in late. I started later than you. I started in thirteen and fourteen, and there was lots of rumors uh, about you know Amazon traded used stuff different, and there was a lot more trouble. And so I listened to the folks that I thought were smarter than me and avoided a lot of avoided most used stuff on Amazon. And you know, through the years, I saw all everything I sold on eBay that was, was being flipped to Amazon, and, and the light never came on. And I kept telling people, "Do what you love, do what you love." The light never came on. <laughs> well, it, it finally, I was selling a, some stuff, and I'm like, "Why am I doing the drop shipping for somebody else whenever I could be making all the profit?" And that was where the light came on. Well, and let's be honest, you know how it was oh, just. <laughs> Why do we do that? Then, you know, that's just pure entrepreneurship, right? It's like, it's not a good idea till it's our idea, right? You know, it's like everybody else is doing it, but it's like, wait a second. I mean, I know that's just some of the stuff that we, that we think of, I think about too. It's just like, oh, someone said that a long time ago. I just didn't listen. Now what? So it's, you know, so to, to really, I shut down my eBay store because the, 
I've laughed about my inventory system being a mess. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to start that over. So I, I completely killed the eBay store. I think I'm up to like 45 listings right now or something. I, I had a store that had a thousand. I, I just, I'm like, you know what? I'm done. Kill it. And so I'm slowly working that back. So that's take, taking some time to the organization. Um, my sweet. Uh -huh. uh, that was, sorry, that was Joni. Um, I love Lloyd. If you can see videos on the channel, she she beat breast cancer, and she now she now volunteers at the breast cancer center, breast cancer center center, center. where she uh where she was treated. So uh, this is one of her highlights there's of the week. Enough of, uh, Hi, Joni. <laughs> hey, Kristen. There's enough taco meat in the fridge for lunch. So uh, she's she's going to volunteer. She does that every every Thursday. It's really a highlight of her week. Uh, so. If you if you want to see an inspirational story, there's about eight videos on the channel of just what breast cancer really is, and we didn't know. So, yeah, um, absolutely, you guys go to uh, is it a beardedpicker.com or beard picker just your YouTube channel? I'm both. Okay, go about. to both of those and see those videos. I mean, these are some amazing people, and like, um, I'm getting ready to do a series coming up called People You Should Know, and um, there's people that maybe you know you just I know that people aren't connected to, or you know, we're all inspired or changed by different things. It might be your next door neighbor, or it might be someone you go to church with, or it might be someone halfway around the world that you read a story about. But we all can be impacted and inspired by somebody else's, um. Well, not only their struggle and their sacrifice, but their, you know, their overcoming of that and what that looks like. And so I love that you and Joni are so willing to share your stories and your ups and downs and all that, because it really does help people get through, um, you know, those challenging times. Yeah, that so, was yeah. very interesting. And actually the way worlds collide, her first chemo nurse, <clears throat> um, Jessica Jordan is her name. And uh, the last name is probably a key for you, uh, Amazon folks out there. Um She's, you know, she asked me what I did and I told her and, and she was trying to put Johnny knees and we're just talking like, I mean, cause she spent more time with us cause it was Johnny's first treatment. And she said, yeah, my, my husband's in the stuff on the internet, you know, and like website dynamics or whatever. I forget how she put it. Turns out her husband is private label guru, Tim Jordan. <laughs> right. He lives, he lives eight miles from here. So, uh, it's, it's weird how worlds collide, but, uh, it's the the videos i you know i let it take a back seat for you know the last six weeks just just to get my head wrapped around switch because i've still got i've still got wholesale i've still got a storage building full of wholesale and it was really figuring out what i had and what i was seeing that could go on amazon and so that was the that was the me changing the model and just switching because now all of a sudden you're back to testing items. So you, you've got your time gets allocated in different ways. And you, I rearranged the building because your storage needs, if you're storing things like printers and bigger electronics, you need more space. And space was at a premium. And so, you know, I redesigned my storage setup. And so, so that's where I went. I like, you know what, I need to put me first. I need to figure out, I can't continue to give out content and help people if I, if I can't help myself and I'm not here anymore. So I need to fix I need to fix where I'm going. And then, I'm, you know, now the videos I put out three days a week, they're coming back. And, uh, but it's, that's, that's awesome. You know, thanks for being so vulnerable because that, those things are so real. Like, you know, you and I have been at this game a long time and of course, you know, making videos and supporting people and helping them because that's part of who we are and why we share and why we want, you know, that's part of our purpose. But at the same time, you hit the nail on the head saying like, we also have to mind our business and if we're constantly helping and serving and, and doing all that it's like try to ride two horses with one ass you just can't do it you know so it's no. really it's really a difficult thing to have to take some time and recognize that it's just part of that entrepreneurship that as we're growing and learning into that that it's okay to change business models when they just don't suit you anymore they don't work for you anymore i mean we we grew up at least I grew up and I'm assuming we're the same age 40 ish, you know, <laughs> it's like 40 ish. <laughs> Oh, no, I'm in the 50s. So. Oh, 50 ish. Oh, okay, so you more than me grew up in that era of like the nine to five American dream. And like you go to a right. job and you work there for 40 years and you retire with a pension and, you know, move to Florida and have live happily ever after. And we, we're in more of an entrepreneurship generation now where we have more options. We have we don't have to go work nine to five and just do whatever everybody else is doing. We can travel the world like you did for a while and just resell stuff out of, you know, and it's this technology we live 
live in, but the pros and cons also mean that that nine to five provided a lot more natural rest. You didn't take your work home with you when you didn't have the internet. You were just like, you're home for the night. You watch TV, you played outside, whatever you did. And now we're just constantly on the go. So being adapting and change to stop and say, hey, this isn't working for me anymore. It's not like quitting a nine to five and just doing another nine to five. It's like, this isn't working for me. So I'm just going to shift it a little bit and see if that works for me, you know, because we have those options now and it's a really nice era to live in, but it also can cause that constant hamster wheel of trying to do all the things all the time. Yeah. Especially I I grew up in the seventies and eighties and there weren't cell phones, you know, pagers were barely coming out, you know, and and so if you went to do something that what you could do, whatever, nobody was tracking you down, you know, your time. So, you know, we, your job didn't follow you like it does now. You know, I, I can be caught at any time at any, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, it's, and, it, it's, and I, you carry a phone around, especially us trying to find values of items. You, you're never, that phone becomes, you know, your work tether and you never are without it. So your ball the other and part chain. of design, <laughs> The other part of the redesign this business too was figuring out, you know, if I'm going to sell used products, you know, yard sales here are only nine months a year, you know, mm-hmm. I, so I've got to prepare for three months. So, you know, I'd never done anything with Facebook marketplace and now I buy quite a bit from Facebook marketplace and I've sold, I've actually sold on Facebook marketplace, which I swore I would never do. And so finding other avenues was the other thing that uh, I had to really assess is because if you look, you can't look short term, you know, man, this is, if you're doing yard sales right now, this is great. You live in Michigan. Your yard mm-hmm. sale season is less than ours. Yeah, it's so. really short. I mean, we're talking May to, if you're lucky, maybe the first week of October. October is like very bipolar. Like it could snow one day and it can be 70 degrees the next day. So October is beautiful, but it's only half the month. So we get like six months or so a year. But Michigan also, at least my area of Michigan, is year-round estate sales, which is my right. bread and butter. I love estate sales. And I I mean, we can talk estate sales forever and ever because like I love yard sales too. I literally I had I was driving my daughter to camp today and there's a sub sale and I'm like, you don't have time. You don't have time. Go home, go home. It was a pep talk because I could not, I was like, but it's a sub sale, but it's a sub sale. And I'm like, nope, I had to go. I mean, I literally had this conversation in my head because I had to go home. I did not have time, but I'm like, Oh, but it's that's it's tomorrow though. <laughs> it's yeah, okay. I I'll get you a, back. <laughs> I always do a stay sale, so I'm, I'm actually going to two this afternoon here. Mm. But it's it's another thing too is estate sales are another one you've got to learn a game. You know, I sell, I buy older electronics and electron. That's not an estate sale bread and butter item. Most people don't buy it, so you you have to figure out. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't necessarily have to go the first day because right. I can I can help myself and cost of sales by buying it at twenty five percent off. On the second day, in, there are some items that will be gone the first day. You know, look at the pictures, but mm-hmm. let's be I, honest. I'm a lo- my- okay, so I'm my okay. Let's talk th- just for fun. We're shifting this to thrifting because this is what we both love and love to talk about. So guess what? That's what we're doing. Estate sales, right? So you said you're not bread. That's not your bread and butter. And I'm like a I'm like a last day Lucy kind of person. Like I'm like whatever is there for me is there for me. Now if it's a, if it's something that I'm either I'm not much of a collector myself. I'm just a reseller. I just see value. I'm like I'm going to get that thing. And I promise you, no one else is going to get that thing because they don't know what that is. But like there's first day items, and then there's like I don't. I'm gonna go on the last day and get the the best deal that I can get. And I pick up those kind of things. I do uh, most of my my specialty right now is um i like barbie dolls old barbie dolls and barbie doll clothes um american girl stuff and then uh, costume jewelry so most people go to yard sales and they're looking for gold and silver and all the real stuff right and i'm going to the fake stuff because i know i'm i'm i've become pretty educated on some of the reselling items of the the jewel, the collector jewelry. Most people, they're like a quarter. Like the people will give it to you just to get rid of like clip on earrings. No, man, I can sell those for hundreds. So it's like, those are the stuff I go back and I'm like, okay, I'll give you 50 bucks for all this. And they're like, okay, take it away. And it's just, it's fantastic. So the, the other thing that, so we have a local auction area. It's a, it's a, it used to be a high bid. It's now a bid wrangler, but it's the same thing. They've been, I guess, 10 or 12 years, they've been running this auction and I was just doing it every other week. I was just running Amazon returns and stuff through it. And finally got serious and asked the auctioneer, I'm like, 
I need to do this every week. Can I have two tables every week and two eight foot tables? And he's like, sure, I we can, we can do that. My buddy Harlan, he already did, he has three each week. And I just put a video up on the channel today about buying from a yard sale and flipping it through the auction. It is incredible fun. You know, the one thing I have preached and I've tried not to do is never, never rule, never, never legislate out in your business. The fun part, you've got to have fun. You've got to enjoy this. There's a reason you do this and you made it into your business, but there's so the accounting, all that crazy stuff can drag you down. You've got to have the fun stuff. And it's, mm-hmm. it's amazing fun to buy something at a, at a yard sale for a dollar and watch it go 10, 12, 15, 20 at an auction. No, mm-hmm. and people go, well, that's not that much money. But I have 40, 50, 60 lots of this kind of stuff. And if you're making eight, 10, 12 dollars on a dollar. Yeah. That, that becomes that becomes pretty good money once a week, every week. Absolutely. And that, you know, the thing about that is, um, you know, I, I've got to look at, through that and find something here that has like a local auction because I think they're I, fun to go to. My husband and I, um, we have a place in northern Michigan and we went to like this basically everything goes like sale they just they brought the tractor trailer around and just had everything on a trailer and the guy was moving around the whole lot just you know auction stuff off and i'm like yeah i'm like we need to do that with some of our you know leftovers and this like kind of a uh ebay auction kind of thing of stuff that i'm just like not messing with anymore just like whole lots of stuff that that sounds like fun and you know what you you said something that's super super important because i think that's what happens to so many people is that you ha- you start a business because you're having so much fun and you're like oh my gosh this is great and you're addicted to that 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 treasure hunt and then the money that comes with it but then you get caught in the weeds you get caught in the like you said accounting and keeping the books and making sure you're doing all this and then you add content to that and all that kind of i mean it's alone ebay and running a thrifting business alone is enough work for any person and then you know you add the pressures of now teaching people because that's also a passion so um where so where have you found or are you still figuring out how to find that balance between i still want to have fun and i still want to serve and teach and i still want to make good Good money and, and and finding that balance what have you done for yourself to help you um reel that in a little best thing i ever did was hire an accountant it, <laughs> if you get to the point where you can hire an accountant and and this is this is how serious this is folks um i went to the university of alabama i have an accounting degree and gave up accounting you know that's <laughs> something i'm trained in and i and i actually i used to i used to think i enjoyed it some but actually my accountant actually texted me yesterday and said, I hadn't talked to you in three months. Are you still alive? I'm like, yeah, I'm still alive. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, uh, just check it in, make sure everything's all right. We need to do mid-year. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm behind a month or two. I'm like, I'll get caught up with you this weekend, but get the stuff that you don't like, the stuff that's, is bothered, that's where that's where the key is. Outsource anything that, that you don't enjoy. You know, I didn't enjoy the accounting, outsource the accounting. If you're I enjoy the teaching part. I enjoy making the videos. I enjoy talking to people, uh, which is weird because I'm an introvert in person, but on the computer and talking on videos, it's hard well, to explain. That, I can tell, I can explain that to you. See, the thing is, is that you're still by yourself, which is part of the introvert that's being served is that you're actually not, um, you're not having any input from people when you're sitting in your own box, you're actually, you know, you're outputting. And so a lot of people with introverts, it's usually because that you need the less input. And so that's why it works when you're in a camera because you it's it's output, but the, the input is what bothers the introvert extrovert thing. So that's really, it's really cool. You know, I appreciate you saying that because you know, you have to, I, I totally agree with you. I have outsourced so many things. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm not sure if you talked to the folks over at eBliss, but that's something that I am moving towards with my eBay store. Cause what happened to me is that I got so caught up more in the Amazon and doing Amazon and then wholesale and bundling, which bundling was best for me because it, it tapped into that creative side of making something from nothing, which I love doing. Um, and so I, I got a handle on that and that was, but, but I was losing the fun because I didn't have that thrifting itch that I love so much. I had to actually cut myself off from going to yard sales and state sales because I love to buy, but I wasn't selling. And I wasn't buying because I collect. I'm like, oh, this is worth money. I'm like, uh-huh. And pretty soon I my space was closing in on me because I wasn't selling it. I was just knowing it's resellable. And so I'm like, well, I have to either solve that problem or make it go away. So I cut myself off for a while, but then I realized it was really affecting me. That was my outlet for, for like, that was the fun and the passion of like, I really love thrifting. And then have you ever had that conversation with yourself? Like, um, 
I know we're getting like fluffy here, but that's really okay because as long-term entrepreneurs, we all go through the, this stuff and the people listening, maybe they're a few years behind us. Maybe they're just starting and they need to know what this journey looks like because it's not a straight line like a lot of people think. Oh, you're on YouTube and you got all these followers and all this stuff. I'm like, no, we still do real work every single day. And so it's just like a, a how how you balance that and how you, how you bring it in. But, um, you know, when you lose that passion, you've got to you know, you lose yourself. You have to, that's part of me. So I had to get back to um, figuring out how I was going to bring thrifting back in because that would kept going down, down, down over here while I was doing Amazon and getting, you know, I just like left it and realized like, if I, if you ask yourself that question, like, what would you do now if you just had, you know, like Tesla kind of money, you know, like Elon Musk kind of money that just like literally set for life. Your kids are set for life. Like you can need nothing, want nothing. What would you do with your time? And I'm like, I'd go to estate sales because I love them. I would, I would, I would play cornhole a lot more than I do today. And I would just like, I mean, but I would literally go to garage sales today. I would have stopped at the sub sale and probably spent all day there. And then I would list the stuff because I would have time for that. And I was like, but wait, that's how this whole thing started to begin with. Like, I need to just bring that back. It showed me something that I needed to bring that right back in and be like, this has to be a part of my life. You have to. So you have to prepare for a long term. The one thing I can tell you is change is going to happen. And if, if you don't adapt to change, if you don't, if you don't, you know, I tell everybody whenever I'm on the morning show, uh, if, you know, when these new the eBay or Amazon half year things come out, figure out how you can take advantage of it. If you sit around and complain and moan and groan, you're behind everybody else who, who's going, you know what, I can do this and that, you know, this, these new rules, you adapt to the new rules, but also your personal life can change your business. You know, you've met my wife earlier in here, you know, when she, when she, I was, whenever she got diagnosed with breast cancer, I had driven to New York to meet friends up there for vacation. That's where she found out she had a lump. She found it herself. And uh, I was a van, a van. I was Mr. Re Retail Arbitrage all over this country, 41 states in five years, you know, 200,000 miles traveled, just buying stuff everywhere, seeing everywhere. And it changed that moment in time. It changed. It not only changed because, you know, she had a year fight to get, get back to normal, but it also changed the way I see, I see life. And no longer did I, I would, I tried after it. I tried, you know, I'd be two days into a trip and go, yeah, I, this is not me anymore. I need, I need to be at home. It's, yeah. you know, what do you, what do you miss in life? You pro when your priority shifts so dramatically, whenever life, and I'm in my fifties and midlife. So that's already messes with you. And then to have a, a crisis of, you know, she got sick. We've been, we've been together almost 30 years when she got sick and, and it, it'll scare the hell out of you to think that, you know, I've spent all this time running all over the country by myself and missed the last eight, seven or eight years. And they could have been the last ones. Yeah. And so it, it, and so that's, that was the first reorg of the businesses where I, I went more into wholesale, even though I still do retail arbitrage, it's, and I decided wholesale's all right, but it's damn awful boring. And yeah. then that's where the fun went out. And I'm like, got to start figuring out. So well, if, you're, if you're not into this and understand that it's going to change and you have to change and you have to be grounded in what you love and figure out how to continue to make what you love work in this business. That's the key. And we, we'll sit here and talk about yard sales and estate sales all day because mm -hmm. we love that. But don't miss the fact that I have figured out how to work these that auction, I'm telling you, find an auction mm -hmm. because when you buy it on Friday and Saturday and then put it on an auction table on Monday and never see it again, that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, you've got me salivating, like no that's joke. Beautiful. I'm like, let me add that. I'm over here, like, take, you know, writing it down. I'm serious because that's part of, that's part of the problem with the thrifting, right? Is it, it can turn into a problem. It can turn into a warehouse and a garage and a thing because like the listing and the distributing and selling of the goods needs to take place as well. And that's the hard part is that like the, the passion, the addiction is not just in the find, but it's also in the sell because I have a lot of finds sitting next to me. It's just like when you actually make the money and show yourself and the world, I guess, that like this is the thing that we do. Um, and I think that that's so true. What you're saying is you've got to, if you're going to be an entrepreneur, you don't do it for the money. 
you do you know that's part of it but you do it for the passion you do it because you can't do anything else because nothing else suits you and what you said is so true and what i think we start learning in midlife right is that like not it it sometimes does take a crisis it ta takes a crisis to show us that what's really important and it's like if everything was stripped away what are what are the few things that i would choose what would i want to do if i you know if if the internet if amazon died tomorrow i would be out of a job I would be out of a job teaching people to sell on Amazon and I'd be out of a job selling on Amazon. So what if I had to start over or reinvent myself or whatever it is, what would I do? And I would be right back to thrifting. I'm like, I will sell everything that's not attached to this wall to make ends meet and I would love every second of it. <laughs> so it's like, that's what I should be doing on a regular basis. And so I'm getting more back to that. And that's just part of me. And I think no matter what someone's doing, if someone's listening right now and they're like, well, I've listened to you guys and I've tried the thrifting thing and it's just kind of, it just doesn't do it for me or I just don't get it or it's just not interesting or whatever, then do something else. Like do whatever it is that, that makes you feel like this is what I want to do today. And like, you don't have to blow it off because it's what you want to do. You know, like call in sick. No, I'm not calling in sick. I can't wait to go to the sub sale. Like that's the kind of passion that produces entrepreneurship to begin with. Correct. And yeah, it, it really solves it. This auction solves 40 to 60 lots per week is, is what I put up there. And so just think about Friday and Saturday, I can buy 40 to 60 things knowing that. So I had to set rules because some things sell better on eBay than at the auction because you still are going to find those gems at yard sales and state sale. And so I, if it's worth more than $50, it goes on eBay. Anything mm -hmm. else goes to the auction and it's, it's worked out, you know, figure out okay, what works. So give us a little bit of detail about these auctions. So you, yours is more of like you, when you say you get a table, like how, like break it down for me. I'm walking in the door. What does this place look like? And as a seller of your lots, like what, like, what is it? break it down it's for like, us. it's a complete online auction so if you can go and you, they have preview days every monday so you can go look it's a big warehouse one side is one week one side is the next and so the current week auction you go to those tables you know an eight foot table i'll have like tw you know what 20 30 items on one table and there'll be a, i'll put a little index card in front of it tell them what it is so the person i don't take pictures i don't do any of that stuff they'll take the picture so i they need to know what it is i guess to help to help give more information because i uh, we found the more information we can put on the cars, they get taken into picture. So the somebody who doesn't go preview it, but can look at it like, like an example right here. I've got, I, I picked up some knives, which I don't know why. I was at a yard sale at 10 o'clock in the morning, which for here is three hours after it opened. Mm -hmm. And there were still case pocket knives there for $2 each. Why? I don't know. And so I have a, a picture of a case knife. It's a 6344. It's a three blade knife. So they'll take a picture of front and back and, and my cards and both pictures. Um, that $2 knife, it's sitting at $27.50 right now. <laughs> and so I picked up six knives at that same yard sale. So there's a section of that table that's got six knives and each one of them's got an index card telling who made it, what the model number is and how many blades are on the knife and whether it's a, a pocket knife or a, a locking knife. So, okay. and so I'll do that with all the, you know, I put so, it's, table. so it's on it's an online auction the company they take pictures of and you have a certain table space and they then they just Correct. auction it all off when you walk in it'll just be a bunch of tables you know there'll be you know enough tables they they run usually 2400 lots every week so that's a lot um the auction usually runs three hours every thursday night is when it ends it's a soft close option auction so that means that in the last two minutes if you bid it goes back to two minutes. So you can't snipe like you used, like you used to on eBay where sniping yeah. was so much fun. Uh, but it's, and so the tables are just blank tables. And so we can put under and above on the tables. So you'll walk up and you'll see the complete tables covered with all items and then underneath the big stuff. Um, and yeah, I've got 40, this is the big side. So on the big side, I think I've got two 10 foot tables and a set of shelves. I've got 67 items. And it's stuff like a Dansko pair of clogs. They're right now they're at nine dollars. I've got two dollars in them from a yard sale. So I, that's that's making now money. What, on now, me. in comparison, how much work do you have to do, and what kind of fees are there as opposed to like selling all that stuff individually on eBay? Because I think we all understand the time commitment it takes to even list one thing on eBay. It doesn't. Ha it's not rocket science, and it doesn't have to take that long. But like, let's just call it like a thirty minutes. Like by the time you take all the pitch. I mean, I don't know. 
It's 30% fee. And all I do is lay it on a table and walk away. Okay. They take the pictures, they make the listing on, on their auction site and do, and run the auction. And I come back the next Monday and bring the next set of tables and they, they give me a check. <laughs> so every week I take stuff up there every Monday and get a check. And then the next Monday. I so take your markup has to be at least 30% in order to, to make some money. So it doesn't matter how much it goes for. It's just a straight 30%. Correct. Correct. And minimum bid is $5 to start. So it goes one's up $1 up to 20, then it's 250 and at 50, it becomes five and it's 10 at a hundred. So it's pretty standard, but, uh, so your rule is 50 bucks or under 50 buck value. You're doing the auction because it's correct. just a kind of a no brainer. You write some stuff on a card and then they you just lay it on the table and then pl 50 plus you do eBay or, you know, do you sell all over or just, do you really just focus on eBay? eBay or Amazon. It could go either way. Okay. Mainly the big, what, except for the, except for big items, stuff that I don't want to ship or don't want to deal with. It could be worth more than 50. It goes to the auction just so I don't have to ship it. Okay. And, but it, it, it's really changed the way I look at things. You know, women's shoes. I've, I've been selling with, this auction. I've got a Vera Bradley backpack, women's shoes. There's a computer. There's a, a air fryer, which is at 14. Folks, you can buy air fryers at yard sales for like three or four bucks. If that's, <laughs> they're all right all the rage right now all over tiktok or air fryer Dude, i cannot live without my air fryer my life has changed since my air fryer let me tell you this right now i like fried food i like crispy chicken nuggets and w chicken wings man make chicken wings in your air fryer and tell me they're not just like deep fried i dare you <laughs> i mean i've got radon mugs i've got bo boy scout books uh hot wheels cars it's it really changes it you there's not a yard sale at, so everybody who's done yard sales, especially guys, you want, you go by yard sale and go, that's a pink yard sale. I'm not stopping because it's all girl stuff. It's all kids stuff. It's whatever. I can tell you this right now. I am going to try this with my jewelry because I will literally pick up a pair of earrings, a uh, like clip on, you know, old vintage earrings that people, a dime a dozen for most people, they, they leave them behind. I could sell a whole lot of those that I got for literally a dollar and they'll, they'll probably sell for 25 or $30 in an auction. You know, eBay is harder to come by because there's more competition. But locally, there's somebody, people that love those, collect those, and they'll, they'll they'll be gone in a minute. I'm trying that for sure. But so I buy, look, I buy anything now. You know, it really forces you to up your game and to understand you. I walk into, you know, I yard sale every week with a real good friend, Harlan. We go every Friday and Saturday. He sells at the same auction. We look completely different stuff. And we, because we buy everything, we fill up my van every single Friday, every single Saturday of stuff going to the auction. Just, you know, this week I, on the video, I think I spent $127 on those 44 lots. They sold for $650. And so my the, the profit on those items was 300 and something. And that's yeah. paycheck Friday. That's right now money. That's next Friday yeah. money. That's not like it took you six months to ditch all that on eBay. It's literally you put it in your van. Do you like clean anything up and test it and all that? Or I mean, it, what's the process of the yard sale to the auction? Because you said Friday, Saturday, and then there's a Monday. So I'm thinking there's not a whole lot of time in between. You just literally shuffle it from here to here. Or is there a process to your electronics? I will test to make sure they work if I send them. But most stuff, you know, a lamp, a Pyrex balls. I'm just reading nine, everything I've gotten this week, DVDs, a boot puller, uh, shoes. So, you know, if there's shoes, I'll hit them with a dry, a, 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 Mr. Whatever, Clean Magic, Magic Mr. Clean, yeah. but just to make it white again. Mm -hmm. um, electronics, I will test. But, you know, you know, maybe there's four electronics. So it doesn't take, what, five, ten minutes. It doesn't take much. And then... Everything else, you know, lamps, clothes, DVDs, whatever. They just, they go from, so here's, I get home in the van, stuff, I put stuff in boxes and throw it in the back of the truck on Friday. On Saturday, the van will be, that stuff is already going. So I just mm -hmm. see what I need to, to touch up on Sunday. And then everything comes out of the truck into the van to join it. And then I drive the van Monday morning. So it's, it's a, it's a little system. It, it, it's, it it's, sounds it's amazing. Really is that year round too? They have the auctions year, year round? round. Okay, it's so year you round. I have storage house. buildings full of junk that okay, wonderful merchandise. People get mad at me when I call it junk. <laughs> that I, I will, this it's stuff. junk. It's junk to you. It's treasure to somebody else. Good for them. It's junk to me. <laughs> so I'll sell all that stuff off 
you know, that's that's my plan is to clear out my buildings through the winter because we won't have yard sales, but we'll have estate sales. There'll still be thrift stores. You can, it's amazing that even I had quit thrifting and going to thrift stores, but now we're doing this, you know, picking up shoes and other things. And it's, it's really changed. It's, it's really, the, the auction has really made it where it added a lot of fun. I mean, it truly has added because the instant gratification for those of you who weren't around when eBay had auctions, I'm going to tell you where eBay screwed up. eBay messed up trying to be Amazon and they, they went away from auctions. The best thing eBay had going for it was to the last minutes of the auction to see what the heck something sold for. You had no idea what it was going to sell for. And it was the thrill of that brought a lot of people to sell on that platform. It was completely different than anything we'd seen because you had the live auction. They had, they had managed to get the live auction on your computer. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that, that was their breakthrough. And I think they got away from it because, you know, there's so many different things. Like you said, they tried to be Amazon or they're trying to, you know, it's like, it's like stay in your lane, like do what you're good at. Keep it at auctions. I mean, if you like auctions, there's nothing more thrilling than an auction, especially if you're a collector and you're getting something for cheap at an auction, you're like, you scored. But if you're a reseller, it's the same thing. I scored because I stole that item and I'm about to resell it over here for, you know, X amount of dollars. I mean, sometimes, I mean, I don't even, I used to feel guilty sometimes because I'd be like, oh, you know, like you ever watched, Amer you know, the American Pickers or whatever on TV and you just laugh at their margins and you laugh at like the way they do TV. It's like, this ain't, this ain't picking. I said, this is like... Nah. This is like, I don't know. I don't even say I'm like, there's no margin in that. I'm like, you've got to just, I don't know. I struggle with that show. I'm like, this isn't picking. I, I'm like, we'll, we'll go picking and we'll show them how it's really done. Yeah. If their margins, they're making like 10 or 15%. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not in. If I'm thrifting, I'm not in unless it's like three or 400%. I know. I'm like, why? I'm like, I would never buy that. And I know, I think like that's different. Like sometimes you see that show and your people are more like they're collectors and that that's a sentimental value and it has a different value than like someone just having a yard sale to get rid of some stuff. Like if people are attached to their things, then they're not willing to sell to you anyway. It doesn't matter. But like we got to make margins and we're driving all around $5 a gallon in gas. I mean, I don't know how much gas is around your neck of the woods, but here it's pricey. So it's like that that's got to be worth your energy. It has to be worth your time to go. And, you know, people are starting looking at that. How about is this your favorite? one when you roll up to a yard sale and someone has like the ebay printout of like what it's uh, worth on ebay uh, and i'm just like uh, you took the time to go to ebay look this up print it out and put it at your yard sale it could have you could have just listed it like what's your problem like i'm not paying you ebay price <laughs> i asked them do i get the 30-day guarantee that it's going to work i can show back up in 30 days and give this back to you get my money back i ask them those kind of questions yeah, that's and do people get offended and like just tell you to go away? I mean, I've never had that, but I'm trying that one next. <laughs> uh, I had a train of thought, and I just I just absolutely lost my entire train of thought. What what the heck? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that happens sometimes. No, well, I was asking you about the yard sale when you asked him if it's got the money back guarantee. So then, what do you offer? Do you offer like if they have the price at like you know fifty bucks or something? What would you offer? Depends on what the margin is and where I'm going to sell it. You know, if I'll, I'll, I'll generally, so I'm bad at this. My buddy Harlan, and when I go to, I've learned a lot from him. He'll punch them in the gut. You know, if they want fifty dollars for it, he'll tell. I get. I was in at five dollars, <laughs> and I'm, I'm I'm more of the fifteen twenty. I'm mm -hmm. I've, I've got to get better at you know to get to where you want to be. You've got to hit them lower, mm -hmm. and that's one. That's that's a something I've struggled with. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, Oh, Isn't it you think saying. because you know what it's worth and it's hard because you're like, you know that like you're going to make a huge amount of money on? Because I feel like some people struggle right. with the fact that like the value that you're getting is your knowledge. That person doesn't have the same knowledge as you. And therefore, if they have it marked at 10 bucks at their garage sale and you offer them five and they take it and you make an extra five dollars, you just paid yourself for your experience. They don't know that. Right. Otherwise, they would have marked it up more, you know, so it's like it's it's kind of like i look at it like you're you're getting paid what you're worth you know you you've earned it you've got your education and yard sale thrifting enough to know that like that's that's how you earn your money so the knowledge that's that's the point i was going to make is especially with estate sales your knowledge is really key mm -hmm. because they can't look up everything and they can't understand it i'm the electronics guy how many, every estate sale you go to you see that bucket full of cords right mm -hmm. and there's a stack full of remotes yeah, I'm the guy that knows what all that stuff goes to. I can look at it and tell you, for the most part, what it goes to. And so they'll have something marked down to this. And 
I wander through the house to find the remote, to find the cables. I find, I'll put the thing together. And so an item that normally I wouldn't have bought because it, you know, you have to add these things to it. Use the, the knowledge. You learn so much in this game, especially with estate sales. Go, because they go around the house and find all the parts to what you're missing. It's there. These people were using this stuff, you know, until something unfortunately happens to all of us. But so, yeah. You know, people think, man, you're you're just taking advantage of something. You know, it's it's we're part of a process of you know, there's so much stuff out there, and you your knowledge makes you money. And so I'm a firm believer that that you know, find the remote, find the cable, find the whatever, because they're not going to charge you. If there's a VCR there, they're not going to charge you any extra with the remote or without the remote. But you sell it for a lot more money on eBay or Amazon with the remote. So Absolutely. get the remote. Look for it. I absolutely, I, I, I absolutely agree with you there. I have just so many times I've bought stuff that I look for the cords or I look for the pieces that go with it to be like, okay, if this is here, like you said, the other pieces have to be around here somewhere. I, I'm the person that I will dump out a bin and sit on the floor and I will look for stuff because it's like, you don't understand. I, I, I liken it to this for people that don't have that thrift bug or they've never experienced that, or it's just not in them. Like, look, no harm, no foul. It's just, it's fine. We, 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 my sister is that way. She's like, oh, you sit around and dig through everybody's dirty he's junk and i was like yeah i said but i said if i told you there was a 50 dollar bill at the bottom of that bin would you dump it out and look for it she said yeah i said that's what i'm doing and she's like ah the light bulb went off and she's like i just didn't see it that way and i'm like but that's what it is i just see a 50 dollar bill down there and you see you know a dirty remote control and like somebody's nasty stuff and i'm like nope i said a quick arm roll wipe on this thing and i can sell it for 50 bucks and she's like Okay, that makes a lot more sense now. So it, it's just kind of like that's what that's how we see it. We see those dollar signs and, and bills hanging because we have done this so long that we can, you know, uh, we got to go again at some point. I'm coming down to visit y'all, and I'm, we're gonna I'm gonna come down and we're gonna thrift together because we will we'll we'll have, we'll have we'll make a video and we'll have like a haul and like what you find and what I find and how different it is and how we can learn from each other's. Property. I'll be I'll be your way in August. So. Um, okay. Uh, Literally, this is, uh, this is recorded. I have witnesses. You've been here before and you don't hit me up. So now I have, I have 20 plus thousand people holding you accountable for hitting me up when you come in August. Yeah. So, uh, family reunion is in, uh, somewhere there in Lenawee County. So it's somewhere in Lenawee County, but I'll be in the week before that is the one, one of the sales. So the long yard sales, I've been trying to do more of those. And there's one that's all the way across the state of Michigan. I think it's yes. Highway 12. It's mm -hmm. the week before. It's the week before uh, the reunion. So I'm trying to figure out what to do for a whole we'll, week. We'll talk off air about that. We'll make some plans because <laughs> that would be that would be just we can make get so much video footage. That would be a really good time to do that and just take time to to hang out and do what we love and and get some video. That that'd be fun for both of our channels. Um, and just for fun, right? So that'd be cool. Um, we'll talk about that off air and how we can get together with that. So. So to wrap up a little bit, like, let's just talk, cause I said, we're dropping some e-com wisdom. It's not really about our processes and this and that, but like all over the years, how many things have changed and how we're changing and adapting so that like, you know, instead of complaining about the rules, we're just like, okay, what do I need to do different? You said something earlier, like I thought I'd never sell on Facebook marketplace and here I am. And it's just like, well, you know, that's what we do when we adapt to the time is when you realize that it's easier to put something on your front porch or at your at the curb and someone, you know, Venmo's you money. It's like, OK, this is really easy now. It's not as right. complicated as it used to be with like Craigslist or even Facebook. When, you know, if you do on Facebook Marketplace, everyone's always like, is this still available? And you get a lot of that. So it's a lot of annoying stuff. But it's just like, hey, 50 bucks, porch pickup or driveway pickup, Venmo. Here's the code. Like, you know, it's it's getting a lot easier to kind of do those things and adapt to the never agains or whatever but um you know keeping that back in there with the passion and all of that just like i think when once a reseller always a reseller it's like something faucet in our brains we can't turn off so we're gonna have to somehow some way figure out how to resell for the rest of our lives it's the opposite you know people always want to ask you the question what would you do if you didn't have an amazon what would you do if the internet died today and i always see the other option is what are we going to do tomorrow? Because where's your audience going? You know, the audience has gone to apps. The audience has gone to Facebook marketplace, mm -hmm. you know, the, the local stuff, you know, that's where they've gone. They've gone to online auctions. They, and so my question is, 
is do you look forward enough to see where you're going and to continue selling, to continue doing what you love to do? Because, you know, the internet's not going to die today. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me hypothetical questions about something that's probably not going to happen. I'll ask you a realistic question of where's the change coming? You know, where, where are you going to be in two years? Or do you stay on top of trends enough, enough to see where things are going? You know, I'm not a clothing seller, but if I was, you can bet your butt I'd be on Poshmark because people are making a ton of money over there on clothes. Absolutely. I recently just started selling 80s clothes because they're so easy to get at at estate sales and for cheap. I mean, you're talking about a 1980s windbreaker outfit for two dollars that sells for over a hundred on amazon or on ebay all day long as fast as you can buy it now 150 bucks for like this straight up 80s like go look for them man the windbreaker jackets especially if you have the full set i mean that it's coming back and like that was the 80s right but that's what i mean it's just like I love what you said there about like not looking backwards, but more looking forward to the change. Like what's coming? Like we've been in this game long enough to know, and we're old enough, right? To know that like all these fashion stuff comes back eventually. Things like that, like the eighties are coming back right now and everything's neon colors and all this, you know, stuff like that. My, my youngest one is into all that. And so it makes my reseller eyes be like, okay, next time I'm at the, you know, I'm, I'm at the sub sale or I'm at the estate sale. I'm gonna start looking for these 80s stuff. And sure enough, my eyes perk up and I'm, it, there's just money hanging in the closet anywhere. And I really don't discriminate. If I see it there, I can't leave it there. If I know it's got value. I mean, I just, I can't, it's like, I know how much that's worth. And my mind says, you don't have time to list that. I'm like, I'll get to it. I was like, I can't leave a hundred dollar bill hanging in there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to your your new listeners and your, your new people that are doing this. You want to know? I can never catch up with 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 Scott and Kristen. They they've done it so long. They got so much knowledge. You know, understand? You carry a computer around with you everywhere you go. That there's more power in that phone than the computer that put us on the moon. Yes, <laughs> it's ridiculous how much power you have in your hands and can look it up and and doing something voice voice searching on an eBay or an Amazon app doesn't doesn't it takes no time folks yeah you, i'm standing in the closet in the it, it, i'm standing in the closet in a, in an estate sale and i got my phone and i'm like uh 1980s windbreaker outfit women's size large and it's ebay i look all of a sudden i see a oh, hundred fifty dollars hundred dollars uh, 99 99 buy it now buy it now and it's like all recently sold in the past week i'm like these are selling hot and they're selling fast and i'm like Here's two dollars stuff that's like this is last day leftovers. P- people stuff people don't want, and that's the that's the beauty of and and I love how you're addressing people that are kind of new and they're thinking I'm new to eBay. Everybody has a knowledge bank that's different. You and I went thrifting once, and we hit totally different corners of the store. You come back with a cart, I come back with a cart, different stuff, and now we just now we're trading knowledge. Now we're like, oh, what do you have? What do you have? You know, and it's just it's like we all know a little bit about something different. And you know, if you grew up in a different era or a different decade or a different thing or you know you you've had a wife that struggles with with, struggled with cancer and my same 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 thing with my dad so we're more product aware of different segments that happen in our lives different things and you know i like the jewelry while other people like other stuff there's room for everybody because there's something for everyone and that's what's great about the sales and things my husband even when we go to estate sales he knows so much about tools and he'll pick something up and be like you know how much that is at home depot i was like no he's like 500 bucks you look down it's 50. He's like, yeah, yeah, I can flip that tomorrow. He one time he bought something that we needed to use. He used it to put it was like a floor something something with the flooring. He put the flooring in and then sold it for the same price he bought it for, same price he needed, things like that. It's like he knows more about tools, but I could walk in and to me I see just a bunch of junk. I don't even know what it is, what it's doing. You know, it's just everybody has a knowledge bank to tap into and there's always money to be made. If Johnny's the same way, she's a wonderful cook and collects Pyrex. If she'll drag along every now and then and anything in the kitchen, she can tell you immediately how much it costs, you know, do people still use it? And, um, and so I'm like, cause she'll go wander somewhere. I'm like, well, if you find something interesting, just hold on to it. What we'll, we'll, we can figure out if we want it or not. So you definitely will even cause, and this is someone who doesn't thrift or doesn't do any of this stuff. Mm-hmm. She, she loves the fact that, and, and don't miss this. You're, you, you need a supportive partner. You know, she loves the fact that I'm doing what I love. And so, you know, she used to not care. You know, she, you know, did you have a good time? I'm like, yeah, I had it. now it's, 
you know, she wants me to show her what I picked up and she's very, very interested in the things that a lot of it she steals, but uh, that's okay. <laughs> she's like, oh, is this for me? Oh, is this for me? <laughs> yeah, she got a, a zero gravity chair that I was going to run through the auction because I picked it up for five freaking bucks. And uh, yeah, it's on the back porch. <laughs> oh, that would not have made it past my back porch either. I'm sorry. $5. I'm like, that's 30 or 40 at the auction. Yeah. And She's like, so, yeah, it's 50 uh, at the store. So thanks for the discount. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love how too. like, you know, you always find your people, right? And you know, it's like, that's the thing is that, you know, um, communicating with people, having a support system of somebody, no matter what you're doing, um, whether they understand it or not, like, you know, just somebody that can support you and say, hey, you know, this is what you're doing. And, and this is what you love, then most people excel and do really well at the things that they love. You don't have to like for my son as an example, like, I never once had to say, hey, go play your guitar. He got a guitar. He never put it down. Never, ever. Like, it's like when he gets home from work, he plays his guitar every single day. It's like you don't have to tell somebody to do something they love. It's like, this is what I want to do. This is what I will move mountains to do. And so, you know, if that's, if that, what I, whoever's listening, like, if that's something that you feel, then you've got to follow that because no one else is going to follow it for you. Do it on your downtime, do it on your evening time, eventually make it something you love because life is too short. Like you even said with, you know, any bouts with cancer, anything like that, losing somebody, you know, life is too short to do something you hate. It's just money. Like you can make money. It's very, you know, there's so many people teaching how too. it's like, but you got to do something that you really, really enjoy doing. Otherwise it's just, it's just not worth it. Life's too short. And a, another long-term thing for you folks is surround yourself with people that are so positive, supportive, supportive to you. There's so much around to be negative about, you know, if you focus on. So one thing I've noticed is there's not as much people at the yard sales here now. I don't know if it's because of gas prices or whatever, but I'm like, even if I drive 60 miles on a, on a, on a Friday, the gas is only up $2 a gallon. That's only, that's only costing me an extra $6. Yeah. I mean, you've <laughs> yeah. surround Do yourself with some right. supportive, positive people. And, you know, they don't have to love what you do, but they have to be invested enough in you to know that that's, you know, it's your success is their success. Mm -hmm. And truly, uh, you know, lost some good friends here this, this past year. And that, that's another thing that's really, um, you know, a thrifting couple, uh, Dusty and Tristan, Alabama Pickers, both passed away. Uh, they were both younger than me. They were in their mid forties. Mm -hmm. And then Harlan's brother, um, this is the one that hurts. Dude, uh, Kevin Tyree, in better shape than me, you know, doctor said, do this, that's what he did. He worked out, he, 44 years old, sat down on recliner, didn't get up the next morning. Mm -hmm. 40. 44 years old folks follow your passion do what you love surround yourself with positive people you only get one shot at this this go around and make what's important to you it's it it's really been driven home this year uh you know not that i didn't get enough of it with with breast cancer mm -hmm. but it just it just got kicked again to really up to the another level you know life's too short to be unhappy life's too short to be miserable not doing what you love and 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 Surround yourself. You are truly the people who you, the five or six people who you're surrounded. That's who you become. Whether you like it or not, it's a fact. And if if you're not who you are, and the people who are around you are not that way, make some tough decisions in life because yeah. it's short. Yeah, life really is short. And you know, I think you hit a certain age when you really start to realize like what we start to shift what's really important to us. It's yeah. like, okay, I we you know 168. I use that number all the time, all the time. It's like 168 hours a week. That's all you get. And you don't know how many weeks you have left. You have no idea. Uh, I did this exercise recently. I read this book called uh, The Bucket List Book by Trav Bell. And I just, I'm a bucket list person. I love that. And there's a chart at the beginning and it has, it, it's numbered one through 80. And the first thing he has you do is cross off how old you are. And you f physically crossing off those boxes is like a light bulb going going off and be like now count many count how many is left if you live to be the average age of 80 on the planet i guess whatever and it's actually lower in most places but america and some other places it's, it's 80 years old so it, it, there's 80 on there and i'm crossing off and i'm just like wow there's a lot gone and it's like okay i got about half of mine left but i'm like what do you and it's like the question is like what do you want to do with it like the only thing stopping you from doing anything that you love and want to do is you 
nobody else is. If you want the money because you can't afford to do it, then make the money to do it. You know, just that it's so inspiring, but it was also just very eye opening to realize that like, no matter what age you are, whether you're 20 or 60, um, you know, those boxes are going away and what, what you want to do to me, failure is better than regret. I'd rather fall on my face trying than not, not try at all. And so, um, really just, this message for everyone today is really just about that, right? Just do what you love and love the people that you're with because that's really what's the most important. You're, you're never, if you're waiting for the perfect time, it's, it's, it's like the old adage about, you know, when you're going to have kids, if you're waiting for the perfect time to have children, you know, I'm going to wait on financially success. None of that stuff ever happens. You just got to do it. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with, you know, whatever you choose to, uh, if you choose reselling, like we've chosen, you know, you get busy at it. Are you going to make some mistakes? Are you going to lose money on stuff? I'm telling you, the, the lessons you learn by the failures are, you're so rewarded by the fact that you went through some of these things. And um, you really, you really understand. It makes you, it makes you, as life and events and stuff makes you a better person. It's, just, it's the same thing with reselling. The more you do, the more, the more you try things, the more you're willing to take a, take a gamble and a risk, the better you are. Your instincts get so much better. Yes. You want to know how I can walk into a yard sale and look at this, this, and this. I've been doing this for a long time. I've practice. bought enough, it's I've practice. Bought enough bad things. But yeah. I can tell you one thing about, you know, people who are in social media, rarely do we show you the bad stuff. And that's, a, that's, that's, that's something that probably needs to change something. I, I, I do it every now and then and people are go, I'm glad to see that, you know, I'm not the only one. That, we all make mistakes, but mm -hmm. mistakes don't get clicks. Mistakes don't get views, listens. Mm -hmm. And so they want to, what's the title of, I found a home run at a yard sale that gets tons of views. Mm -hmm. You know, I screwed up and bought this gets nothing. Yeah. <laughs> So I don't know, saying. man. I like to learn what not to buy, you know, especially if it's something that you look for, but like, okay, like the top 10, like, you know, I don't know. What's his name? Uh, Jason T. Smith does a lot of music and, and CDs yep. and stuff like that. So he's always doing CD stuff. And I'm just like, show me the top hundred CDs to, to, to never touch with a 10 foot pole that use as like a door stopper or, you know, just the smashing, you know, like a, I don't know. That's just what I think of some of that. So maybe we, we change the thing and we say, these are stuff what not to buy and how, what all the things I wasted money on that I'm taking now to the to the donation pile that I bought that wasn't good. Um, See, or something easy. you missed a boat on, right? Something that you thought was still trendy and you realize now there's a thousand of them and you just missed it. You know? CDs are easy. I've taken part of his classes and uh, anything popular, walk away from it. Yeah. <laughs> right. If you've That's never right. heard of it, it's worth money. <laughs> That's what I think. Oh. Correct. It's the CDs are especially. Yeah. If, if you find a CD that you've never heard of, but looks professionally produced, like you're like, okay, this is somebody something. And uh, usually if you have never heard of it, it's worth money. That's always what I think. That's exactly how I look at them. I've been to state sales and if it's a bunch of big band and other kind of stuff. I'm like, Hey, I'm, I'm interested. If it's mm -hmm. a bunch of, you know, eight nineties or current country or something, because I live in Alabama. Yeah. None yeah. of that. None of that's worth any money. Right. So for sure. For sure. Well, Scott, I appreciate your time and your energy It's always a delight to talk with you on, um, anytime and on the podcast. And I think for sure, I'm holding your feet to the fire. We're getting together in August. We'll at least make a couple yard sale videos just for fun. Uh, we'll make time because you know, that, that's what we said. Life is short, right? <clears throat> when are you coming back to Michigan? So, um, we'll do that. You guys stay tuned <clears throat> and, um, Sorry, excuse me. Um, stay tuned to the Amazon Files podcast, y'all. I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing. I don't take that for granted. Thank you for listening to us, Scott. Thank you for being here. And we'll see you guys same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.